another thing. This is like what I was going to tell you. If you're not in an anointed service, you're never going to see the gifts move. If the anointing's not there, the freedom and the liberty's not there, you are never going to see the gifts move in power. And if they move at all, you're going to be very... They're just not going to have that anointing, that anointing from the Lord on them because there's not enough liberty. I've been at churches and I, I have prophesied my whole life. And that was the first gift I got at 19. And I'm, tell, I'm going to tell you right now that if you if you don't have the liberty, I don't care how anointed. Pro, I, I was more anointed tonight here. I haven't been in years. Because when there's liberty, your spirit starts to flow. And you start to see and you start to hear with your ears the word of the Lord coming to you speaking prophetic truths. And you cannot do that on your own. And if you have people around you that are resisting the move of the Spirit, you're, that's why we have no prophecy in the church anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why we have no liberty. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's, there's liberty. And it says, um, and the thing is though, you can't go over your pastor because the pastor is the leader. Right. So therefore you have to submit. And therefore the Spirit gets quenched. So you at like this point. Well, so, well, not always. Some, I've had to stay. Sometimes I've stayed because I, the Lord put me there as an intercessor. And sometimes I've yeah. left. Yeah. There's a time to stay and time to leave. There's, all, there's a time under the sun, the Bible says, for all things. Oh, right. So, anyway, there is a time to leave. You know, we're <laughs> okay, anyway. And it said they prophesied and blah, 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 blah. And then in the third verse, uh, I won't say all those names because they're too hard. And there were six of them under the hands of their father, Genesis. So there were six prophets in this one mm -hmm. service who prophesied with hearts. Mm -hmm. They had the anointing mm -hmm. with the music, the and then the music would begin to move upon them and their souls and their mind. When it's real powerful, Holy Ghost touched music, your mind will open up to the things of the Lord. Better than, and if you even, here's my, the way the Lord started using me when I was 19. Let me share with you. You start getting into the Word because never prophesy outside of the Word of God. Mm, right. I mean, never. Right. Nonsense. There's so much nonsense, I can't believe it nowadays. But the book of Revelation says in the 16th chapter that the spirit of prophecy is the Word of God, Jesus. Mm. The spirit of prophecy is the word of God, which is Jesus. That's in Revelation 16. So when I hear people prophesy outside of the word, they're just either, number one, novices, number two, ignorant, or just letting the devil use them. They're deceived. Yeah, they're deceived. Deceived prophets. So you have to stay within the realm of what the word speaks. Okay, and when you when then, and then when you speak through the word of knowledge, a lot of times the prophet uh, Agabus in the book of Acts came down to Paul and he tied him he tied him up with his girdle and stuff, and he said, "The man that owns this girdle, he says he's going to go bound and die in Rome." He more or less tells him he's going to die. So he had a word of knowledge, and then they all begged him, including Agabus, "Don't go, don't go," and he. He, then God left it up to him. Do you want to go? Sometimes God will leave something up to you. Do you want to be a, like these heroes in the army that go overseas? And they'll they willingly they go anyway because they want to lay down their life for a cause. That's what the Lord Jesus, Paul said, I'm willing not to only go to Rome but to die also. So sometimes God calls, they call herself to the higher order of a martyr. So that's, that's how he voted and how deeply dedicated the soul of Paul was. But he don't always, God don't always demand that of you. It's like, okay, here my soldier of valor, my aunt. You want this honor, you want to go go before me. Is that are you willing to pay the price, Paul? Paul said, I, he said, what mean you to break my heart? He said to the prophets and the men of the Christians around him. They begged him and begged him, oh Paul, don't go, don't go. But he had the higher call of honor on his soul. That I'm not willing only to be bound, to be beaten, but I'm willing to die. Who will have my shield my son die? So, we don't know what the Lord's going to call us to. Not one person sitting here doesn't know what tomorrow brings. 
but there's that call of valor from the soul of God. You know, when he cried out to Isaiah, he said, who will, who will I send and who will go for me? Right. God don't force us to go into the, among the harvest field. He calls us to go. Mm -hmm. he, God doesn't force us, mm -hmm. but he calls us to that calling. He, what did, what did he, he said, here are my lords and me. <laughs> so that's a song, but anyway. But anyway, I won't go on and on. Any other thing you want me to... Yeah, oh, I just, what was you reading that with that scripture where you're talking about Chronicles? the prophets? Oh, let's go on. That was First Chronicles 25. It's oh, they're all the many of their sons did that. Oh, and and another thing too, uh, in the prophets when Saul was called, remember he said when he first got his calling, Saul said to Samuel, he goes, "I'm the least of my father's house. I'm this. I'm that." And the Lord says, no, you know, Sam says, the Lord's called you, you're going to be king of Israel. It says, then as he went up to the hill after Samuel anointed him, he goes up the hill and he joins all the other prophets. And when he come into that presence of the, the Lord's presence with all the other prophets, all of a sudden, the spirit of prophecy comes on Saul. And it says, as he began to prophesy, he was turned into another man. So when you come into that realm of the Holy Ghost, that was what really turns people. You say, well, what makes them such a warrior for God? What made Paul the great warrior he was? What made him stand through the beatings and the, the drownings and the shipwrecks and the, all the things he suffered? He even was, said he was beaten to death almost, what, three times? But anyway, all those things that came upon him. And, you know, he was a great soldier of valor. It was because the, that he had that that anointing and that calling that the call was greater and brought courage into his soul that he could do all those things. Because it's that, and this is what I don't see, this is the other thing in Exodus, I'm going to bring this in close. And then what did the flame of fire and the voice out of the bush say to Moses? Don't come any closer, because we serve a holy God. Don't come close with those shoes on don't come close with those shoes on, the shoes that danced in the halls of Pharaoh and lived in the world and sought fame and glory through your he was a warrior. He was he went into foreign lands and worked for and was a battle chief for Pharaoh and all that stuff, commander. Moses was. God said, in other words, forget all that. Take off those shoes. I've got some new shoes for you. But of course in the gospel. It's the gospel, the beautiful shoes. But he says, take off those old shoes, that old life, that worldliness. Take off that junk. Don't come any oh, Don't come any closer with all that junk. And then he says, he says to him, because now, now the Lord's going to visit his soul with the burning bush fire. And the Lord says, what? For you're standing on holy ground. You're a new creation, created in Christ Jesus. Brand new, with the most beautiful feet, ready to preach the gospel. And that's for all of you tonight. Amen. Greg, what? She had a Oh, what? Isn't it true that there's no more prophecies to be fulfilled before the church is raptured up? That's right. So it can happen really any, any second. We don't know when. We don't know when. And now we think we're not. We just need to be ready any moment. Right. What are we going to be doing? Here's, right here, here's the way I teach it real close. Okay. We have Calvary. We have the, the church beginning. The end of the church. The rapture is ready. And in the rapture, it's a twinkling of an eye moment. Mm -hmm. it's, and it says in the scriptures, the Greek means autonomo, which means an atom of time, which means... It's so quick, it's beyond a quantum leap of physics. It's faster than an eye can blink. It's, it's so fast, only then they use the Greek word, you know, atom of time. It's so fast. There, you can't blink your eye and behold anything. Because, whew, and it's going to be so supernatural. Because Paul said we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So no eye, in the rapture, no eye sees him. At the second coming, 
every eye on earth sees him. And there's another key in the first chapter of Revelation. The tribes of the earth shall mourn. I believe it's the Hebrew tribes. Because they, it, uh, Zechariah proves that. Is that right? 12, 14. Uh, I mean, 12, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, and the uh, 13th and 14th chapter. I'll talk about how the supplication in the house of David gets raised up again. So that the whole purpose of the seven-year tribulation is to bring them to their knees. But they won't come to their knees except for the 144,000. See, there's the 144,000 that a lot of preachers miss this. 144,000 and the remnant, the remnant nation, part of the nation. There's 144,000 chosen out of every tribe, but there's also the remnant nation, the national, the national, which we don't know how many are in that, yeah. but the nation of Israel. It says, because it says in Romans 11, and then shall all Israel be saved. And it says if their failure to receive Christ was the grafting in of you Gentiles, how much more when they accept their Messiah, the fullness of the riches will come even upon the Gentiles that are left. Of course, we'll be gone. But it's talking about the righteous Gentiles. But a lot of the Gentiles you know, will be saved during the trip. Oh, yeah, a lot of the Gentiles will be saved during the trip. You know, it's like the ones that don't accept the mark of the beast. Right. There'll be a lot of martyrs, and there'll probably be some, yeah. some who are hid away in the caves. Yeah. Who's these? Who's these? It came out of great tribulation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are the those ones that are left behind. Right. But they, a lot of them, will be saved because they right. they become a martyr yeah. to be saved. They yeah. shed their own. It's that they wash their own blood. Huh? Yeah, there'll be a fugitive and yeah. vagabond. Exactly. I got yeah. another question. Yeah. You guys like want to hear some more teachings yes. from Donna? I just keep, can I just make a comment? Are you done with that? I'm sorry. I don't ever get it. You know what I have a hard time wrapping my mind around? Like, all this are raptured that are saved. And especially the Jewish people, because they, they think that the Messiah hasn't come in. But when all these people are raptured and gone, how is it they still, anybody still cannot believe? When all these people just disappear, you know what I mean? Well, we've got right now such a thing on the internet going about the aliens. And all yeah. the different planets being inhabited, they're probably going to believe a lie, along with the lie of the Antichrist, the Great Delusion. Right. And do you know? Do you know the holograms can put a Christ up in the sky just by Hollywood alone? I mean, NASA and DARPA and all the mind control groups that are working nonstop—the sci mad scientists, so to call them. Yeah, but, but as you would call them, yeah. all the bad scientists are working at breakneck speed, and the transgenetics, they're mixing humans and animals in laboratories. Right. This is Hitler. This is Hitler all over again. We're, we're, the gun control, that's all Hitler. That he, he had a gun control, his his gun control plan was almost identical to the one the one the the, the, the some of the people in the government want to pass within our country. Right. So so we have all these things, and, and we are being, you know, inundated with everything. But the Lord tells us, you know, that the quicker we see all these, the quicker we have to spread the word. So in the book of Daniel, he tell you that knowledge will be increased. Technology is out racing. The human mind, now they're going to have robots and, and things taking, you know, basically. They've already over the phones. The what? The robots have taken over the phones. Yeah. A lot of us try to get through to anybody and you get a, <laughs> a voice. I know that. I know. Uh, yeah. Well, I that's, apologize, Paul. I'm sorry. But, but you know what? It's exciting. I think we live in exciting times, yeah. but fearful times to walk tenderly and softly before the living God. Right. And to ask God to discern every spirit. Because there's going to be more and more spirits. Because Paul said, many voices gone out into the world. And none of them with that is without significance. But it also says on the Word of God that... That that all how be it, Paul says only one of them is a little true Lord. One of them is a true voice. And you can't know the true voice unless you know your Bible backwards and forwards. And so, it's and it's not on emotion, it's on the word. Mm -hmm. Right. What about when you're around somebody that preaches and acts like they love the Lord and they know the Lord, but there's something in your checking your spirit about that person. You know what I mean? Things to check it. They 